Hello, my friend. This is Clyde. Let not your heart be troubled. Those were Jesus' words to his disciples in one of his closed doors meetings. Why would he have said that? For one thing, he was less than 24 hours away from his death, and he knew well that when the shepherd is hit, the sheep will be scattered. But that was not it. The more important matter as far as Jesus was concerned is that he was going to return to heaven and would no longer be with them in the flesh. You're talking about a reality check here. For three plus years, Jesus has been with these guys like they were always together, except for a few instances when he would break away to go and pray by himself. Their master was always with them. He knew that that day was something they were not looking forward to happen. And so from the outset of this talk, we hear him say to them, let not your heart be troubled. The reality is that Jesus was going to leave them in the world. The world was a dangerous place. The world was not a friendly place for followers of Jesus. The world was and is a place where Satan operates and Jesus was well aware of the danger that the world would present to his followers. And Jesus did not shield them from what they would be contending with. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. John 10 and verse 10. There you have it. Jesus knows of the devil and his actions and plans against his followers, but Jesus also knows that he is more powerful. On another occasion, Jesus closed his talk with the disciples with the following statement. I have told you these things so that you in me may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. John 16 verse 33. You see, you guys are going to face the heat. It will be tough at times because you are going to contend with an enemy who is relentless and deliberate and determined to destroy my people. But you have my word. I have already won the battle. Listen, let us see if we can track the enemy and his efforts. It all started in the Garden of Eden, the place where the first couple lived. Everything was peaceful and beautiful and that couple was living their best life until... That fateful day when Eve encountered the talking serpent, they fell for his lies and sinned against God. That was the beginning of trouble for the human race. But you will notice that God put Satan on notice. Your day is coming. And I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head and you will strike his heel. Genesis 3 and verse 15. In other words, The war is on, Satan, but you're already defeated. Then Jesus, the Son of God, came into the world, and the devil was determined to rewrite the plan of God. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, left the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during those days, and at the end of them he was hungry. Luke 4, verses 1 and 2. This was not a casual encounter. This was Satan trying to destroy Jesus and he tried, but we know the outcome. Three major temptations later, three major losses to the devil. And in Luke 4 and verse 13, we read, when the devil had finished all this tempting, he left him until an opportune time. The big showdown, the most epic encounter was at Calvary. Satan turned up in full force with his military team. That was a vicious battle, but let the scriptures speak for itself. When you were dead in your sins and in the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive with Christ. He forgave us all our sins, having canceled the charge of our legal indebtedness, which stood against us and condemned us. He has taken it away, nailing it to the cross. And having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross. Colossians 2 verses 13 to 15. Read that again for yourself. Just like God had promised back in Genesis 3 verse 15, Satan experienced the worst defeat ever. So now that Jesus was going to leave the world, Satan was going to regroup and come after the followers of Christ. 
What do you expect? Do you now understand why Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled? Jesus knew what the future was had in store for the disciples and everyone that followed him. In his prayer recorded in John 17, we hear his heart. My prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. They are not of this world, even as I am not of the world. John 17, 15 to 16. Every Christian knows that this is true. Once you are a child of God, you are the target of a vicious enemy. And in some respects, your hearts should be troubled because here is what we deal with daily. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Ephesians 6 and verse 13. But don't you ever forget what Jesus told his disciples then. I have overcome the world. You are led by the greatest and the best, God himself. And the Bible tells us in clear and certain language, you, dear children, are from God and have overcome them because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. First John 4 and verse 4. Let not your heart be troubled. Let me say that again. Let not your heart be troubled. Our Lord knows what we are up against, but he tells us that we are more than conquerors. And if you doubt it, check out Revelation 12 and verse 11. They triumphed over him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. My friend, all of this will come to a dramatic end. And the devil who deceived them was thrown into the lake of fire where the beast and the false prophet had been thrown. They will be tormented day and night forever and ever. Revelation 19 verse 10. So I stop by here to tell you what Jesus said a long time ago. Let not your heart be troubled. The life of a Christian is not a walk in the park and some days it is really bad. But be of good courage. Your Savior has overcome and it is only a matter of time when our enemy will meet his eternal doom. There will be peace at last. Until then, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Let not your heart be troubled.